So after yesterday's video on sharpening the weird stuff, I had a lot of questions in the comments about, well, how do you sharpen large curved surfaces? So today I'm going to show you how to do that one. But I need to warn you, it's not the safest way to do it. There is an adage when you sharpen that it's always safest to take the tool to the stone. But when I'm sharpening things like my axe or a large draw knife, I'm not as accurate holding the axe down and keeping it level because it's got a rotation aspect and stuff to that. I don't know why, but I'm more accurate if I take the stone to the blade in that situation. When I sharpen my axe, I would take my stones out of my little case. I would secure the axe on the far side of my table. I like the far side because it allows me to keep the axe directly across from my body, so I'm not having to go at an angle. Now this particular edge, I, I accidentally hit a nail, so it's got a really rough spot in the middle. So I'm going to go all the way down to my coarsest grit. And what I'll do is I will come over here and I will feel for the angle. And I can, you can kind of get that angle. At that time, I will lock everything together, and then I'm just keeping pressure down. If I examine closely, yes, I'm getting swirl marks going all the way across the edge. So I know I'm covering the entire thing and I have my proper angle. And then I'll just do that until I get a nice burr all the way across. And I've removed any damage. Now, if it's really heavily damaged like this one is where I hit the nail, sometimes I do have to go to the grinder. And I don't have a jig for this, so what I would do is I will set my tool rest so I can put my finger on the back of it, and whenever the blade touches, I'm at the right angle. And this takes a little bit of trial and error. And from there, my only goal is to keep whatever portion of the blade I'm looking at horizontal or perpendicular with the stone itself. If I, you do it exactly the same on both sides, you should get even bevel on both sides. But it is key, you don't want to overheat your blade, so check it and cool it with water fairly often. Then before, before going to the next grit, I'll do the same exact thing to the other side. And on the other side, it's more of a timing thing. My key goal is to not move the bevel more to one side than the other on this particular axe. This is a double bevel axe, so I need it to be kind of balanced. Now if there's a single bevel axe for like, if you are hewing or something like that, then you would just have to flatten one side and sharpen the other like a normal tool. From there, it's just a matter of flipping and repeating going through your finer and finer grits. Now, there is an adage in woodworking where if you're sharpening, it's safest to take the tool to the stone. Because when you have a blade in your hand, there's no chance that you're going to be going across a sharpen. You're sharpening this way. And that's how you do gouges and a lot of handheld tools. But tools like this, I've never found it easy to get the angle right. Because I'm kind of, you got two different curves that you're matching up, so you have to kind of flip and rotate. So I've always had better luck putting the axe on the bench and then moving the stone over the blade. But you have to w watch out because your hand is moving across a blade. So you just, you gotta be smart. Don't get careless when you're doing this technique because it is very easy to cut yourself. The last step is the most critical. It's working that burr back and forth. I have my 8,000 grit stone or a DMT version of 8,000 grit. It's not quite as high as a water stone. 
but I have a nice burr on this side. So I will sit here and just work it back and forth. Now you could polish this with a, a piece of MDF and a little polishing compound, but this is just an act, so I'm not going to worry about that. So how sharp is sharp enough? In my mind, when you can't see the edge, you're doing okay. Especially if it's just a little axe. Since we're playing around with axes today, for the bonus, I thought I'd introduce you to a brand new YouTube channel. Less than a week old, started by a phenomenal production woodworker. Uh, before we get there, if you like this video, please do me a favor. Like, favorite, subscribe. Do all those social medias. And if you're getting something out of this series or any of my lo other longer form videos, please visit WorthEffort.com. I run a blog there where I'll be updating a lot more often in the future. And I also have an online store where we have a lot of my own woodworking plus some swag such as t-shirts and hats and stuff like that. Now, Michigan Sloyd on Instagram, if you haven't followed him, he has some phenomenal green woodworking that he does. He makes bowls, uh, spoons, little, little mugs for soups and stuff like that, even chopsticks, all by hand. And if you look at the detail of his work, it is just phenomenal. Four days ago, he decided to launch a YouTube channel. Yeah, he's just getting started, so he's learning all the audio-visual aspects and stuff like that. So I'll give him a little bit of break there. But the amount of knowledge that he has and that he can convey to us, I'm really excited about. He's only got about 100 subscribers. Imagine that, 100 subscribers in only three days. It'd be a really boost to his ego if we could get him well over 1,000 by the end of this weekend. So do me a favor, go to his channel and subscribe to it. And the reason why I say it is purely selfish. I want to learn what this guy knows. And I am hoping that over the coming months and weeks, he's going to go into a lot more detail of how he's doing some of those phenomenal cuts without, you know, getting so sore. Or how he works his axe to such fine detail. I mean, this is a rough cutting tool for me, and I just butcher stuff, which means I have to spend a lot more time with my knives and stuff like that. He can almost go straight from the axe to finish cuts. It's just phenomenal, and I personally would love to learn more from him. Michigan Sloyd on YouTube. I'll put a link down below.